Slang in Newfoundland is evolving all the time. There are words and expressions that you will hear on a daily basis, unironically. It's just part of the vernacular. There are other expressions that are probably from another era, but they're coming back. There are some words and expressions that are attributed to Newfoundland that I have never heard a Newfoundlander utter in real life. I'm going to focus on some individual words, a couple of expressions, and then sometimes the words actually lead to expressions so it'll all come together. I'll do my best to just kind of get to the point and leave the historical background to some of these things to other resources that are out there and there's some good ones books videos whatever your preference is there's a lot more information about any of these things that you can find and i would encourage you to do that because the history is really cool but i'm just going to kind of stay surface level and give you a rundown particularly for people who are not from newfoundland who come and you're looking for a bit of a crash course in some of the important words so what are you after doing now that after in there is pretty unique to Newfoundland. I don't think it's the only place in the world that uses that after in that way, but you're kind of referring to something that has happened. Usually the way that I hear it, it's usually something negative and maybe not something critically important, but like if you come home and you see your kid just tore up the house and got the toys thrown everywhere and it's a huge mess, you might look at him or her and say, what are you after doing now? Where's my phone to? Anybody see my phone? Where's my phone to? When I first left Newfoundland, I never really had a really strong accent, but people could still pick up on me being from Newfoundland because I would say something like, where's Dwayne to? My boss's name was Dwayne, he was a prick, but I'd say, where's Dwayne to? People would be like, where's he to? Like, where's he at? I'm like, yeah, I suppose, where's he at? You can say, where is he? I mean, you don't need to use that too, but it's something that we use a lot in Newfoundland. Don't be so crooked cranky. I mean, that's kind of an easy one, but I don't think you hear it too many places. It may not be confined to Newfoundland. You may hear it other places, but it's definitely a common Newfoundland expression that you will hear on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on who you're talking to, of course. But I hear people that are in their 70s and people in their 20s. doesn't really matter. People use that word on a regular basis. A couple of my favorite expressions are actually just like single words or like two word expressions and they're used all the time and they have been for a long time and they pack a big punch with just a single word or two words. Some examples would be deadly, best kind, rotted. They just mean a lot. Deadly is a word that kind of comes and goes and I, I don't know if a lot of young kids say deadly anymore. People in my generation, deadly was just deadly. That's deadly. Another one that is definitely used on a regular basis. People don't get choked when something bad happens. People don't get upset when something bad happens. They get rotted, right? And my favorite simple expression of all of them that I use all the time and a lot of people use all the time, you will definitely hear this in Newfoundland is best kind. How are you getting on? Best kind. It's just another way to say basically all good. And whenever you would, you'll hear people say all good, no matter where you go. And it can be a simple response to any kind of question. Best kind, same thing. All good, best kind. Some of the old standards that you probably already know are yes by and what yet. So they're both very commonly used every day. You kind of understand it by the context. In particular, yes by. Yes by is so flexible. You can say it for so many different reasons. There's tons of blog posts and videos that address it. So if you want more information about the actual correct usage of yes by, just, just go do a little quick Google search. But I will say it's you know basically yes or no or anything else that you want to say. And it's something that people say in Newfoundland hundreds of times a day. What he at is a greeting. You, you kind of understand what he at is a greeting once you hear it, but the responses to what you at can be pretty flexible as well. Nutting by is a common one. Nutting, simply nutting is common. Very rarely will you have someone actually describe what they're doing at that moment. It's just usually a how you doing type of greeting. Now with that said, it can be used in a different context where it's not a greeting where it's like, what are you doing? Like, what are you after doing now? What are you at? You conjugate the verb in the correct English way. You may scratch your head over this, but the simplest way to do it in Newfoundland is just to add an S after each conjugated version of the verb in question. For example, I likes that. I need that. I wants it. Like whatever you're saying, you can just add the S and it can apply to any subject of that verb. So he wants to go to the movie. I loves you. They needs to go outside for a little while. Kind of simple, you just add the S to it. There's another specific verb that when you add an S to it, it becomes a very powerful word, and that's nose. And I'm not talking about your nose. I'm talking about I knows you're not getting confused now by this conversation. You say something like, 
oh, I know it was now. We're kind of like dismissing somebody. It's like, yeah, whatever, right? But you can use knows in a way that is like, for some reason, complicating a simple sentence by making it negative. Like, I knows you're not some crooked right now because you can't find your wallet, right? Something like that. I knows. You can use knows in kind of a lot of ways. It's some powerful. Some is the next item on this list. Some is a pretty commonly used term. I think it's fairly obvious what the context is and when you would use it, but you hear it a lot in Newfoundland. Oh, that's some sweet. Going back to a word that was already on this list, you're some crooked. Sometimes you might hear, oh, you're right crooked or you're right nice too. I think some is more useful than right. Uh, so I'm not gonna add right to this list, but in this context, it's some hard to understand everything that Newfoundlanders say. Now, one word that you are very hard pressed to ever hear in Newfoundland is in place of saying maybe, you say, yeah, I suppose. Or do you suppose that the weather this winter is going to be particularly harsh? Like you just wouldn't say that. But something that you'll hear all the time. In response to that question, you might hear, I suppose. It's just kind of a, a dismissive, maybe, like sure. Like it makes sense. It's pretty obvious. But it's particularly S apostrophe P-O-S-E. Not suppose. You just suppose by just kind of a, a dismissive agreement. Something that I never really said, but I think it's pretty common around the province is when you're talking about where you come from, you say, I belongs to Fairyland. I belongs to Norris Point. I belongs to Leading Tickles. You're just kind of describing where you come from, your people, your family, your heritage, right? Belongs to or longs to is kind of another way to say where your people come from, where, you, where your roots come from. In Jamaica, there's a, a very common expression that's really taken hold in the UK as slang because of the huge Jamaican and generally the Caribbean influence in the UK. It's guan, and a very common greeting in, in the UK, coming from Jamaica, of course, is wagwan. The, the stem of that, it would be guan, like what's going on, wagwan. Newfoundlanders use guan as well, but it's not used in the same way comes from go on that's kind of like a, a statement of disbelief if someone's telling you a tall tale but it's believable you might say go on or go on there's a word that i never heard used this way it's more of an around a bay word but it's not specific to any region i hear from people from all different regions around the island but i never really heard it in st john's and once i heard it in town i start hearing it more and kind of comes up a little bit more often now but it's bridge if you think of the word bridge, you think of a structure that allows you to walk over a body of water or drive over a body of water. But in a lot of bay towns around Newfoundland, a bridge is your back patio, your balcony, your veranda, your deck. Now I'm trying to share some knowledge about the lingo, some words or some expressions, but one thing I'm genuinely curious about, I say breakfast, dinner, supper. My mom says breakfast, dinner, supper. I say that. I know that it comes from my household. Is this a Newfoundland thing? Do a lot of people, I know not everybody will do this, but do people in Newfoundland often say breakfast, dinner, supper, or is that just something from my household? Lunch and dinner or dinner and supper? Please let me know, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Sticking to my mom's expressions, she has one thing when you're just being silly and she's like kind of like dismissing you, she says, go lie down out of it. Is that a Newfoundland expression or is that just a royal family expression? Has anybody ever told you when you're just being silly, go lie down out of it? This is something that is not universal. It's not something that every Newfoundlander will say. And I've heard Newfoundlanders say it both ways, but as a Newfoundlander, I love bologna, not bologna, bologna. I go to Marie's and I order my bologna thick cut for frying. Some people order it thin cut for sandwiches. You can say bologna, nobody's gonna judge you. I've talked about bologna on the mainland and I've had people look at me strange like, do you mean bologna? And I say, no, I do not, I mean bologna. One of the interesting ones that I kind of feel like was going away and it has been brought back into day-to-day -day life is now to once. Now to once generally means like, okay, I'm going to get to it soon. That's the next thing I'm going to do kind of thing. But like now to once, definitely a Newfoundland expression, doesn't really have a pin down definition, but most people get an idea. If you say, oh, can you help me out with this? I say, yeah, I'll be over there now to once. You kind of know that like, okay, they're, they're going to be a second, but they're going to be here soon. Now, some of the words that I say are kind of regional. Some of them are kind of, they're from the past. And they're intentionally brought back. But one word that you're going to hear a lot, and it's something that's current, and it's something that is not ironic, is skeet. 
So a skeet is a hard ticket. Hard ticket, is that a Newfoundland thing? I'm not sure. A skeet's somebody who, in mainland Canada, you might say skid. It's very commonly used word. I don't want to focus on it because it's a pretty negative way to, to talk about people, but if you don't understand what it is, leave a comment and I'll try to answer that way and just describe it a little more. I don't want to take up too much time with this video. Now I want to stop picking on skeets for a minute because that's a sin. Right? That's a sin for me to talk about skeets. I said I'm not going to get too deep into the history of why people talk differently in Newfoundland and all the different regions and all that, but I will say one thing about the history of, of St. John's in particular. Specifically, the Catholic Church had a lot of power historically over the city of St. John's and, and Newfoundland in general. What is Catholicism known for is that everybody's a sinner and we're all going to hell. I'm sure the word sin carried on through the tradition of Newfoundland, even though today the Catholic Church is barely a semblance of the powerful entity that it was, the word sin has maintained itself in like common conversation. And anytime you see something that you kind of feel bad about, or if someone's saying something about a skeet, for example, you might say, that's a sin for you. Sometimes you see something that just kind of tugs on your emotions, and you say, oh, sin. Just one simple word, sin. Yeah, it's kind of a fun one, but it comes from, you know, sin. Fill your boots is a funny one. This is one from, I remember my childhood hearing it and it was usually kind of used lightly, but it just means like, dig in, take what you need. Like I'm moving out. I don't want to take all this stuff with me. Anything that you want to take with you, just fill your boots, take what you want. Otherwise I'm just going to end up giving it away or throwing it in the garbage anyway. So just fill your boots. Dies. The word dies can go in a couple of different directions, but I dies at you. I dies at you is, is you're funny. I dies for a drop of tea or I dies for a Raptors game because the season's about to start. Just basically means like I give up anything for the NBA season to start. Now there's a lot of expressions that are considered like stereotypical Newfoundland expressions, but like I genuinely never heard them uttered by a Newfoundlander unless they're in a screeching ceremony or they're being ironic or they're singing a song. Like I just don't hear them in the general Newfoundland vernacular. It's just not something I don't think we say. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong about this. I'm, I'm trying to learn through this exercise of sharing this knowledge as well. But like, for example, the long may your big jib draw comes from the screeching. It's likely that it came from some historical place where Newfoundlanders actually use that. But it's just not something that I heard in my life until I started hearing the screeching ceremony. And similarly, like we wouldn't call today that's my buddy over there, that's me old cock. Like we just wouldn't. It's a funny thing to say, that's why it's included in the screeching. It likely did come from the real language back in the day, but it's kind of like now, someone my age or even a little bit older named Richard, they wouldn't introduce themselves as Dick. It's just very unlikely, not impossible, of course. You know, I can't speak for every Richard out there, but it just seems very unlikely that somebody in this day and age would introduce themselves as Dick. But with that said, of course, like one of the big parts of a screeching ceremony is that Newfoundland expression part where a mainlander or an American or whoever the case may be says some Newfoundland words and expressions. But they're not words or expressions that even most Newfoundlanders hear outside of the screeching. And in that vein, there's another expression that I have only ever heard on the mainland, in Ontario or in Alberta, when I meet somebody and they learn that I'm a Newfoundlander. They say, oh, you're a Newfie, eh? What is that expression again? Uh, stay where you're to till I comes where you're to or something like that. Like, stay where you're to till I comes where you're at. It's not something that I've ever heard anybody actually say unless it's somebody from Ontario or Alberta trying to make a joke. It doesn't really bother me when I hear it. Like, this isn't something that makes me upset or, or mad. It's just kind of like, it's corny to me. It's not something that Newfoundlanders say to each other. Now, have you ever said it to somebody or has anybody ever said it to you for real they're actually trying to get to you because you're in some kind of distress so they say stay where you're to till it comes where you're at is that something that anybody that's watching this video has ever heard have you ever heard this before let me know the term the rock for the name of newfoundland i don't think i've ever called newfoundland the rock it is a rock in the ocean. I kind of like the imagery of it, but I just kind of felt like it was something that was forced upon me to call Newfoundland the rock. It didn't feel homegrown. I don't know. I don't think Newfoundlanders traditionally have called Newfoundland the rock. Younger people maybe call it the rock a little bit more naturally than I ever could. I don't know. Let me know. Am I wrong about that? Is it still sort of a weird thing that Newfoundlanders don't call Newfoundland the rock? I don't hear it in the circles that I run in. I don't hear it. But maybe other people do actually call it the rock. It's not like a Newfie versus Newfoundlander thing where it makes people mad. I don't think, it doesn't make me mad to hear Newfoundland being called the rock. It's not a big deal. I just don't do it. 
If someone asks you where you're from, do you call Newfoundland the rock? I don't. Who Nietzsche has kind of recently become like the darling of Newfoundland expressions because it is really cute. It's a really sweet thing to say. This is one of those examples of ones that I'm sure actually is part of the lexicon in certain families or certain parts of the province but I've never heard it until recently. And I hear it now fairly frequently. And if you look at any lists online or hear any videos, it comes up regularly, like who knit you? Who's, who's your family? Who, where do you come from kind of thing? But it's one of those ones that I just don't say myself. Lard Tundran, God bless your cotton socks. And these are a couple of examples of, I believe, ironic statements. And I think these are things that people used to say in the past, maybe there's places where it comes up unironically now. But they're kind of funny things to say. Now, Lard Tundran is like, oh, Jeepers Creepers, right? Lard Tundran, God bless your cotton socks, going back to the beginning of the video. It's kind of like, oh, you're some sweet you are. Now, of course, this list isn't meant to be all encompassing. I am using the examples that I could think of, but I know I am missing some, or they, there may be some that you use on a day to day basis that I'm not even familiar with. Let me know what some of those are. I don't claim to be like the all powerful expert when it comes to this. So if you disagree with any of my definitions, also let me know about that. If you did actually enjoy it, maybe consider subscribing to the channel, at least hitting that like button. If you actually learned something from this video and you want to learn a little bit more, Check out this video next. I get into a few more topics beyond just the scope of how we talk in Newfoundland. And I'll see you there.